when you restart the computer you now actually need to start Genie Backup and you can do that one of two ways either in the bottom right hand side you've got the backup agent here you can double click on that or right click and choose open or you can go to start you can go to start and let's move that down just a bit and from there you can choose genie backup and from here too I'm just going to click it here because I'm there already and it's an evaluation copy so we're just going to go through this and it's got things like a backup tutorial, restore a backup okay so we've got those and um, there's a feature summary and how to and all that kind of thing so we're actually going to set up a backup and to do that we just need to click on backup we want to create a new backup job which is that one there and we'll just call it my backup you can create a desktop shortcut so we'll do that just makes things a little bit easier when you want to run it and once you've done that so you've given it a name it's a new backup it's going to create one on the desktop and you now get the option of where you want to back up so you can back it up basically a LAN is a local area network so if you've got a network you can back it up onto there onto a USB memory stick floppy disks etc remote location so that's basically uploading to a server CD or online backup um, let's do it doesn't really matter the results are the same so we're just going to put it onto a CD and then you choose which one and I only have one so it's basically on the D drive and going to use all the available disk space if necessary if it doesn't fit on one disk it will automatically go on to the next one so basically all you're doing so basically all you're doing here is choosing the media that you want to save to right and then the all important bit what do you want to back up well if you've got Outlook, you could click on Outlook and that would automatically save the Outlook file which has your emails, calendar and everything that you use in there if you use all of it. So I just need to tick on that and it will actually tell me which bits it's actually saving. So it's actually doing the settings, email accounts, the whole lot. Now if I had Outlook Express installed and I ticked on that, you see it tells me that I can't because I don't actually have Outlook Express but if I did I could click on that and it would do uh, it. I'm just going to untick it because I don't need it. Then you've got your desktop. On your desktop you've got folders and files so you can then just choose if you want the whole desktop or which folders and files you want on here. So I'm just going to tick that one. I could tick all of them just by ticking that box there. If I realize I've made a mistake I can just untick the ones I don't want. You've probably got a lot of files in my documents so we could do that and you could back up all of your documents. You may not want to and if we go to selected files and folders you can see why your music you may not want to back up because you may have all of them already on CD and music takes up a lot of space so effectively by having the CDs you don't need a backup okay it would be a pain to go through and have to re put all your CDs back into your music library but nevertheless they are there so not the worst case scenario Pictures, again they can take up a lot of room, but in this case I do want to, I want that one as well. And videos, they can take up an awful lot of space, so you may or may not want to do that. Okay, so the other things we want are things like probably the registry. You can back up the entire registry, which is what I recommend. And basically the registry stores all of your program information. So anything about your computer, if you want to rebuild it from scratch, let's say this computer went completely belly up and you needed a new one, you install Genie Backup Manager and all of your settings will come back. And the same here, by clicking on the window settings, it remembers everything, your mouse preferences, your cursors, power settings, the lot. So Internet Explorer remembers the cookies and all of your settings. Your Windows address book, which could potentially be part of Outlook Express anyway, but you would need to tick it here. Your favorites, which is in Internet Explorer, 
and any fonts. You may have installed something or someone sent you a font, you don't, may not even know it, and it's been something you're using. Back it up. The great thing about backing up using a program like Genie Backup Manager is it's only backing up your new and changed files. So you're not going to have to go through and get it to get all the files together every time. Once it's done the initial backup, it only looks for the changes and you can still revert back to those other disks and wherever else you may have stored it. So first time, just bear in mind it might take a little longer. Now, that's your profile. So it's got Outlook and all the standard sort of things, My Documents. You've got My Media. Media files include movies, any videos, music, and photographs, things like that. Playlists, again, you can do that. Bearing in mind this is not your iTunes playlist, this is your Windows Media playlists. Then you've got My Folders. And these are for the extra things. You've really got the My Documents thing here. You can back up from your network, but your network should really have its own backup system because it can take quite a long time to get files over a network. What I'm looking for is on my C drive, which is my internal hard drive. I know that I want to back up my data and I want to back up my websites as well. So I'm getting both of those. Don't need to worry about anything else there. So there's that. There's my plugins got plugins for various things including the Genie Backup Manager, Windows Media Player, so backups are, so plugins that might be available for things like that you might need to do. You shouldn't need to worry about that too much. It's mainly your documents, things that you create and getting the settings back on your system that should concern you the most. Let's click on next. Backup type. This is where you can do a full backup an incremental backup. Increments is what we want. Increment just basically does a backup of things that have changed and that are new. And you know, you could then back up with compression or without compression. Compression will save you space, but it'll take a bit longer, so you just need to choose which one you want. The that gives you the most compression all the way down to none at all. You've got a lot of files you might want to compress it. Security, well, if you put a password on it, which you can do just by simply choosing one of these options, don't forget the password, because then if you need to restore, you won't get it back. I know that has happened to people because they do backups. Restoring may or may not ever happen, and it might take a long time before it does actually happen, in which case you may have forgotten the password. So if you are doing a password, then I would recommend that you actually have a password that you're going to remember. Self-restorable means that the program itself to restore it is actually stored on the disk, in which case you don't need to install Genie Backup. It'll do that for you, so you don't need to keep it. Although, make a backup of Genie Backup itself. Okay, so I've gone through the process. I could back up now, which would start it. Just prompt me to put in some disks might take quite a few disks the first time. But it's important to do a backup regularly and I'm going to schedule a backup. And your options are, firstly, you need to tick that you want to enable a backup and it defaults to doing it daily at 2 o'clock in the morning. I might not leave the computer on that long so I might want to do it every day at 7 p.m. You could run it every few hours if you're working on something really important and you can choose the day and how many hours or minutes you want between each one. You have a choice as well, running it weekly. I suggest if you're running a business, run it daily, particularly if you've got things like accounts and things and you're working on important projects. Running weekly, that's good too. You choose the time and you can choose what day or days you want to run it on. You have monthly. I would only recommend this if you're not actually doing that much important work on your computer and if you lost the data, it wouldn't actually be that much of a problem. So again you can choose when, you can choose it to be on the first Sunday, Saturday, second, third, fourth, last, you name it, it's got the options so. there. Run once, well you just choose when you want it to run on that one single occasion. So you might actually think well this particular job I want to run on Friday, the end of the day and that's it, that's the only time that it runs and you might think that's sufficient. 
run a Windows login. When you start the computer, it asks you, in this case, when you log in, it can start. And the other option is to run it even if you're not logged in. So as soon as the computer is actually ready to do it. So that's the scheduling, and that's actually really important to do. So get into a habit of doing it, get some disks. Backing up onto an external hard disk is a great way to go. It's fast, they're portable, very quick to restore from as well. Memory Stick's another good one as well, although it might not have the capacity. CDs, DVDs, well, if you scratch them, they're also a bit slow to restore from. But nevertheless, does it really matter? The important thing is to be able to get the data back. And external hard drives are actually very reasonably priced now.